Hey everybody out there in the internet world, my name is Chris and this is Amber and you guys know my cameraman Mike and these are my Dark Avenger comic book reviews. Uh, comic books we are discussing this week were released June 8th, 2011. Uh, a bit of news this week, it has been announced by Marvel, A, Bucky is dead. It has been definite. Uh, it's been definite. It's been uh, put down concrete. Also, the Uncanny X-Men line will be ending after X-Men Schism. Uh, there are there is talk about a few X-Men comics that are going to come out of this new number ones for X-Men. Uh, X-Men will still be around, so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they have planned with the X-Men after this whole civil war goes on between Cyclops and Wolverine. Very interesting stuff so far. Next week, as a matter of fact, the third part of Prelude Schism comes out, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, DC Comics-wise, they have announced the 52 relaunches with the new costumes and little tidbits here and there. And I'm being honest with you guys, I'm not getting anything except the first issues of the comics I've been buying. And... Mostly for Superman, I'm buying it as an endpoint for me. Uh, I'm probably going to be dropping everything. I've been reading the updates. And you know what? I've been on a few message boards where people are more excited because these are people that truly don't understand comic uh, DC Comics, truly aren't fans of the stories and the characters. Because if, they, if you're a true fan, you realize that these are icons. These are superheroes who don't need a retelling. They just need good writers to do good stories with them. This remake that this guy from Marvel who's out of nowhere become president of DC Comics because Dan Didio decided to step down. Um, he doesn't know what he's doing, but DC feels, well, he worked with Marvel and Marvel was on top. So let's let him make all these decisions and maybe he'll help us. It's not going to help. I don't care how many people are excited, and I'm going to stop talking about it after this, and I'm making this very brief, because you know what? I give up. I really do. Because it's proof enough that I went on a message board today, or uh, it's not, not a message board. They post a question of, what do you, how do you feel about these new titles and <clears throat> these new relaunches and these number ones? And every single comment said the same thing. Uh, I'm giving it a chance. I'm pretty excited for the reboot. I'm this and that. That's proof enough right there that people really don't care enough to want things to be the same. The same. If you don't care enough, if you're willing to say, okay, well, they want to change everything. They want to do a retelling of an origin. They want to reboot the entire universe. I don't really care. The universe sucked anyway. Shows how much faith people had in the DC universe from now till way back when. Me, I'm pissed off. But that's because I knew there was potential for the universe the way it is now if you got good writers. But apparently, whatever. Uh, what will be, will be. One or two voices, one or two people who are pissed off obviously are not going to um, matter because DC Comics is going to do what they want to do, whether we like it or not. And those people that are very excited that are going to kind of spoil it for people like me who are diehard fans that are familiar with the icons and what they stand for and believe that this change is wrong, but... There's always Marvel Comics. Once again, I will not be promoting DC Comics when the relaunch happens. I will be getting the number ones and not reviewing them here. Because I think it's just plain retarded. But, like I said, end of it. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. You guys will just see in September when things disappear. Starborn number 7 came out this week. Stan Lee's run on these three comics. Starborn, Soldier uh, Zero, and The Traveler is amazing. There is a crossover going on with Starborn and Soldier Zero coming up pretty soon and I am very excited to be seeing that. Um, in this issue um, we uh, learn a little bit more about uh, Benjamin's father and also he learns about, we learn about um, how um, the shapeshifter cannot have any feelings towards um, Benjamin, because basically she says at birth, we're taken away, we're stripped of all our humanity. You know, it's the standard stuff. Nothing abnormal with that. The artwork, once again, is crisp and beautiful. I want to try to get some artwork. Um, almost, uh, whatever. <clears throat> Don't mind me, guys. But it's a little late at night. Uh, we started this review a bit later than we uh, normally do. 
So anyway, then we go back to Earth, and the witches find a log cabin where one of the spaceship signs are, and all the witches die except one, and turns out that Kirk Allen has more going on for him than uh, meets the eye. Turns out he's not really that human. Later on, Kerr uh, shows up and uh, goes to save Benjamin and the shapeshifter, except the uh, problem is... Uh, Benjamin asks why they call him Kerr and why don't they call him Kerr Talon. It turns out that his, I want to say uncle, um, his uncle, that's right, his uncle disgraced the name and it turns out Earth was a huge exile. Basically, if they did something, if the, if, um, they were too high up, if they were well known or anything like that, they were banished to Earth instead of sentenced to death. And Kerr, Kerr, um, what's his name? Kerr, Callan, um, was, uh, uh, exiled to Earth. And it turns out that Kurt Allen is probably Kerr Allen, uh, Kurt Allen's uh, uncle. And it's left off with them saying, we need to go find your uncle to be continued. Really interesting stuff, background. A lot of background stories are in this issue. Background on um, the, shapeshifter. the shapeshifter, background a little bit more on Kerr, and also the Kirk Allen being revealed as one of the um, aliens also. I would absolutely recommend this. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything, but for the most part, I would absolutely recommend this um, this book. I'd recommend all three books, actually. It is amazing. Uh, so, yeah. Check out Starborn. I got cover A. This time I was smart. Instead of going for the cover B, I went for cover A, and cover A was exactly what cover B was. So, I would absolutely say check it out. Now, Amber, your final comic on Vampirella, because you said you were just getting the first story. Vampirella number six. You want me to hold it up? I got a bad cover. I, everything was blank. I literally took a shot in the nice. dark. Really okay. I like the background. I don't particularly like the picture, but the background's very nice. Um, I'm just going to do one quick thing and look in here, but uh, then I'll give you a briefing on the storyline. I just want to find out what the thing's name is. I'm sorry. I'll just call it the worm. <laughs> yeah, just call it the worm, please. Because <clears throat> nobody really cares about Vampirella anyway. Um, the big worm thing, if you remember from the last issue, took Vampirella to be his wife. Um, the reason he took Vampirella to be his wife is so that he could come into this world. Um, and instead, Vampirella fights the guy off, and it, that's pretty much the story. I'm not getting the next series issue, and it was kind of shit. I did not like it at all. I liked that Vampirella, yes, uh, you know, defeated the thing for a time by, like, telling it off, or not telling it off, beating it off. Um, but Dracula escaped, Lafon is dead, all of her minions are pretty much dead, but for the most <coughs> part, there was nothing in this issue. Nothing that would make you want to come back for the next story arc. I mean, a lot there's, of people there's me, a cliffhanger hanger towards the end that I could possibly like put a little bit of hope into, but I doubt it. Like, very highly doubt it. So I since mean, you're doubting it, you're not, not gonna... Not getting it, no. So, sorry guys, but Vampirella's out. So I'm Vampirella's a, a skip. Yeah, Lady Death's coming out next week, as a matter of fact, so looking forward to that. Vampirella is a major mm -hmm. skip. Okay, so finally this week, as far as independents go, Image, spawn number 208 is here. Excuse me for a minute. Okay. Let Mike scan the issue while you're going. In this issue, Twitch and Spawn... Um, in the last issue, we left off with Twitch and um, Jim's uh, confrontation where Twitch finds out that Al Simmons is dead. Now... Jim wants answers. He wants to know about the suit. He wants to know about Al Simmons and everything. And Twitch does not trust 
Jim Downing because he thinks that Jim Downing stole the suit from Al Simmons and killed Al Simmons. Uh, once again, artwork is very good though. Um, honestly though, other than uh, a few key parts in this issue, it's really a lot of bullshit. It goes back to the hospital a lot where it turns out in the very, very end there's a, um, a huge like surprise, but I'll leave it off. Um, I'll skip, I'll leave that for the end of this book. Uh, so anyway, Spawn, big spoiler here, drops Twitch off a building because he thinks Twitch is one of the vampires. And while he's temporarily dead, uh, in the beautiful bright light that they do, I'm just showing the bright light, Twitch meets up with his son who is warning Twitch that uh, he has to protect Jim and he has to protect the suit because if the suit becomes in possession of blood, it could mean the end, it's going to mean the end of everything uh, and everybody's going to be, uh, everybody's going to die. So Jim brings uh, Twitch back to life and Twitch is pissed off at Jim and he says, you know, F you, I don't give a shit, you threw me off the building, I don't trust you, you don't trust me, that's basically all we have in common. But because of what just happened with his son in the flashback, Twitch says, but anyway, I'm going to tell you what I know anyway and then you maybe, maybe in exchange, Jim Downing will uh, explain to him what's going on um, that he wants to know. Anyway, in the very end, big spoiler, it turns out the entire staff was killed and um, we're left off wondering who the staff really was, to be continued. Um, it's a lot of circling around. I really don't care what's going on at the hospital. What I, I really should. I'm, I'm pretty sure I should be caring about what's going on in the hospital. I'm really just more focused on the whole Twitch and um, Jim Downing confrontation going on, but... I don't know. This story, I'm, I'm hoping that Al Simmons at some point comes back. That's all I'm going to say as far as Spawn goes. Because, I don't know, the story just feels like it's going around in a circle. I mean, finally it looks like it's moving forward a bit. Where they have to um, stand up against blood and everything. Or else blood is going to destroy the world. But other than that, that's basically the only feeling I'm getting from this right now. And the other Spawn comics had a little bit more life to them, the first hundred anyway, I've yet to get the second hundred uh, from issue 100 on. New Avengers, we're now the big two, Marvel, New Avengers 13, this is the ending of the story arc before fear itself, absolutely not jump on friendly, when I jumped back into this, it was a mistake because uh, I jumped in the middle of the story, uh, Mockingbird is now in the hospital and everybody's going after, I forget the woman's name, Superior, Superior, I believe her name is. I don't know, hold on, Nick, yeah, Superior, I was right, and um, they are interviewing the people that they put under arrest, they're going crazy trying to figure out where she is, and they're not giving her up, then finally, um, Talia Hand gives um, uh, Nick Cage a call, oh, Victoria Hand, sorry, not Talia Hand, I'm in, I'm in Batman comics, that's really great. And she says she knows where um, Superior is. Uh, let me put it this way. She says where Superior is. Uh, long story short, the Avengers show up and take out Superior. Mockingbird ends up waking up in the end. And it turns out that Victoria Hand and uh, Superior have something going on. Because in the end of the issue, that's left in her prison cell. So it turns out Victoria Hand might be still wanting Army, the... Um, hammer to come back. Next issue, Fear Itself. Now that's going to be something that's uh, going to be enjoyable to read and something that I can actually talk about without completely jumping in the middle of a story and not knowing exactly what's going on. But like I said, point is Mockingbird wakes up. Huge spoiler there. We're jumping into the Ultimate Universe for this one. Ultimate Spider-Man number 159. One more issue till the ultimate death, so to speak. Uh, in this issue, basically, Peter Parker because um, now his mask is off, so technically he's Spider-Man, but without the mask, takes on the Sinister Six, except for um, Green Goblin, who's knocked out for uh, at the time. Uh, artwork is beautiful. It's good to see um, Bagley's artwork. I hope I said his name right. Um, turns out, during the fight, um, Spidey gets uh, knocked out for a time. Uh, Craven and... Electro and Sandman, a very nice little impact webbing thing. 
with the water. Actually, he breaks a fire hydrant with his foot, and he causes a huge shock. But he's still suffering from the bullet wound. Turns out, though, his identity is finally out because people are taking pictures of him with their uh, wonderful video phones. And turns out Sandman comes back to life, and Vulture shows up, and Peach is getting the crap beaten out of him. And then Aunt May gets a call from her next-door neighbor, uh, Mary Jane's mom. I believe it's Mary Jane's mom. Uh, uh, Doris. Uh, and, um, whatever. And she comes speeding back to save Pete, and huge, huge spoiler, Electro gets shot by... May Parker, who shoots to kill and does, in fact, kill Electro, knocking out also Sandman and Vulture. But there's just one big problem. The last page, which is a splash page, somebody wakes up who was knocked out at the beginning of this issue, and it's to be concluded. My prediction, two to one, um... Pete and Green Goblin are going to duke it out one last time, and I think they're both going to go down. That's my my prediction. I could be wrong, but once again, after 160, I'm probably dropping the ultimate line because, first of all, it has no impact on the actual Spider-Man comics, and second of all, no offense, but since Ultimatum, the Ultimate Universe has been on a downward spiral to crap, which is exactly what's going to be happening to DC Comics when they do the reboot, except it won't be the Ultimate Universe, it'll be their universe. Yes, that's a little... Mm, I put in there, but... Expect those low blows from time to time. Uh, Fear Itself, Spider-Man, Part 2 and 3. Um, straightforward, this issue. Uh, Spidey fights Vermin for a bit. Then he meets up with the guy who's very paranoid, who shot somebody. And they all meet up at the church. And Spidey stops him from shooting. Uh, it turns out Faith, as uh, the priest says, is stronger than fear. And... Um, then it turns out the pregnant woman ends up at the steps of the church and uh, it's up to Spidey to save her. But at the very end of the issue, Ben Grimm touches the hammer, which is what happened in Fear Itself, number two. And it's all leading into the uh, dramatic conclusion of this issue. Also, in the middle of this issue, Spidey has a talk with um, J. Jonah Jameson, who basically says, get your ass out there and save the city. And basically, there's a, spa a splash page of him doing tens of thousands of things during the whole fear thing. And the issue's good. It's more filler than actual um, Spidey. Can you do without it? Absolutely. Um, I'm just getting it because I wanted to have the little tie-ins with all the comics that I get from uh, Marvel Comics. So... It, if you don't have the extra money, it's a skip. It's really nothing major. It's something that if you want to complete your, um, what do you call it, your set, you can complete it. If not, it's skip-worthy. Okay, finally this week from Marvel, Wolverine number 10. Wolverine is going after the, uh, yeah, the red hand. I want to say the red hand. I hope I'm right. I'll say it in a second. In this book, once again, Origins. Um, or actual, uh, yeah, no Origins. Basically, you find out that the old man who's going after Wolverine, who started the entire Red Hand uh, society, um, uh, the reason he's going after Wolverine is because, big spoiler, Wolverine killed his father his father 80 years ago, and uh, Wolverine says, don't come after me, you don't want to follow me. This is back before Wolverine joined Weapon X and had his, his mind erased. And also, you get this weird guy called... Um, I think his name is, I want to jump to the end of a minute to get his name, um, yeah, Cannonfoot, who could shoot these weird kind of cannonballs at, off his foot, and he shoots a couple of them into Wolverine, and anyway, then the rest of the book, the whole middle part is, um, first, I want, I don't want to, I just jumped in the middle without saying the beginning, uh, it turns out Wolverine shows up at the address that he finds in the last issue, and he meets up with Cannonball, who's the first of many people who want to um, beat the crap out of uh, Wolverine. So everybody somewhere else at a hidden location is watching the entire fight go down, hoping that Wolverine's going to die. And then it jumps into the origin story of this guy where he's a child, his father dies, and then it shows him growing up. It jump, well, first it jumps into some nice artwork, by the way, with Wolverine versus Cannonfoot again. And then it goes back again to the past where 
uh, the boy grows up and he's learning things and he's, he, he ends up buying back the mines that his father owned and burning them down. And then his entire life's um, work or his, what he's dedicating his life to is killing Wolverine. He finds Wolverine, calls him James Howlett. At the time his mind was erased, he calls himself, he says, my name isn't James, my name is Logan. Shoots the crap out of him, turns out he comes back to life and beats the crap out of him. Then it jumps forward into time a bit where this guy is starting to recruit people into uh, the society which they don't know the name of yet and then this weird bondage looking girl because Wolverine defeats Cannonfoot shows up and uh, very freaky by the way but anyway Wolverine kills Cannonfoot and this woman shows up and then it shows the birth of the red oh the red right hand and that's where it's to be continued so next issue I'm guessing Wolverine is going to be facing <laughs> this weird psycho bondage girl and we're gonna delve a little bit more. I hope not. I hope it's not much more of this origin thing. I'd much rather just stick to the present and see Wolver what Wolverine's gonna do next. These covers are a bit eerie. Got to be honest with you. These are very eerie covers compared to the good work on the inside of these covers. I'm hoping at some point that the eerie covers stop because since issue one, they've been very. Ah, they're nice, but they're very eerie for Wolverine. When you think Wolverine, you want to think X Men, not. The Stand. Uh, okay, now we're jumping into DC Comics. Uh, for however long, however much longer we'll have DC Comics on this review, I'll have them on my review. First off, really quick, Part Two of Five, Batman: Arkham City. Uh, if you're going to be getting the game, if you got the first game, going into the second game, uh, this is a nice little filler for you. Really quick, uh, in this issue of Briefy, somebody studying Batman uh, to learn his moves and stuff. And also Arkham City does go up and Joker is being transported there, but not before a couple of the guards want to basically kill him. Harley shows up and saves him uh, and they escape. Batman shows up uh, to foil the escape, but it turns out they evade Batman and escape into Arkham City and that's where it's left off. Once again, if you're, gonna, if you're getting the games, I'd absolutely say pick this up. Uh, it's a nice little filler. By the way, speaking of games, and movies. I missed this at the beginning of the review. This week, Green Lantern Rise of the Manhunters for the Xbox, Wii, X3, uh, 3DS, and um, PS3 has been released. I got that. I actually started the game recently on my gaming walkthrough site. Uh, it's a really fun game. It has a God of War feel to it. Check it out. Really nice. Also, sticking with Green Lantern, this is the week of Green Lantern. Also this week, Green Lantern Emerald Knights comes out, uh, came out this week. And coming out next will be, it says right here in the back, Batman Year One. Looking forward to that because Superman guest starred in Batman Year One, I believe. If this is the Year One I'm thinking. So I'm looking forward to Batman Year One, and I'm looking forward to actually watching this, and I will be doing a review on this when I uh, get the chance. A little brief review on this. It's a fun game. Is it worth the 60 bucks? I'll let you know when I finish the game on my gaming site. Check it out, BBC 13 Gaming. Okay, continuing along on this week, uh, three comics that I'm not really going to do a huge review on because they were boring as hell. Uh, reason I got the three comics, I might just zoom down on these really quickly. Three new pins. Did not get the Frankenstein one, like I said, that's coming next week with the other three. Uh, the three comics you get with these are, for the, the Captain Cold one, you get Citizen Cold, number one. For the Deathstroke one, you get uh, Deathstroke and the Curse of the Revenger number one. And with the Aquaman one, you get Emperor Aquaman number one. I was bored to hell with Aquaman number one, not going to bother reviewing it. Bored to hell of Deathstroke number one, not going to bother reviewing it. Citizen Cold kind of kept me uh, a little bit. He's a... Basically, Coast City recognizes him as a hero, but really he's a vigilante. He basically, if anybody ever found out his secret identity, his uh, whole superhero or loved um, persona will, would die. And Wally West, who is a reporter, spoiler, uh, in, this, in the Flashpoint universe, finds out. And um, Captain Cold freezes him in the end. And also Captain Cold just kills... Uh, he kills... Uh, shoot, I forgot who he killed Mr. Freeze. First page, he kills the uh, Mr. Freeze of the Flashpoint universe. Artwork is pretty good. I believe it's the same artwork from the uh, Flash comics, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 
but once again, uh, being honest, when issue two comes around, I'm probably not going to pick this up. And there's an advertisement for the games right here in the letter column. Um, so yeah, got them for the pins, uh, and also just to throw out the first issues for you guys. We'll not be getting Gorilla Grodd next week. It's a one shot. Had no reason to buy it. No interest at all. Last two issues for DC Red Robin 24, where the hit is now on Red Robin. Um, and the woman who he's chasing after Scarab escapes in the end. And now it's up to him to figure out um, where she escaped to. Uh, artwork in this book is beautiful, although it's going to not exist after September. As far as I hear, Red Robin is not being continued. And he meets up again with, um, I believe her name is Promise, because he says Promise. Um, I missed out on issues in the middle of here. And she ends up knocking him out, and the weirdest ending in comic book history happens here. Promise's sister is going to kill um, Red Robin because of the, um, how do I put this, the target for death, or the death, uh, the target for the Assassin's Tournament. He's a target, but not before she gives them, they have sex and she gives birth or carries his child. That was the weirdest kind of ending. Uh, and it says, next, what what a way to go. So, she wants to have Tim Drake's child before she kills him. Kind of creepy. To be continued in the next issue where um, Huntress, I believe, is making a guest appearance in the next issue. I'm guessing. Pretty good. A um, lot of talking, a lot of running around in this issue. Not really much to the action line, but as always, I love Red Robin. Um, be honest with you guys, I am going to say one thing about the reboot. This is the last video I'm going to be talking about it. The reboot, the Batman comics for the most part, except Bat Knight, I believe it's called. Batman for the most part, his books and Nightwing and the other Batman and Robin, Batman Dark Knight, etc. All of them look pretty good. Where? What do what we have, Mike? 2719. Well, I'm going to get through this pretty quick. Booster Gold, 45. Turns out that in the Flashpoint universe, um, they have control over Doomsday, but um, in the end of this book, uh, actually Booster Gold meets up with Jade, the Jade of the Flashpoint universe, and um, he learns about what's going on, and he decides to go to um, Bruce, uh, to Wayne Manor, and... Really quick, they lose control of Doomsday because Jade, thinking she did the right thing, shoots at the airplane, which was controlling Doomsday, and in the very end of the issue, uh, they lose control of the monster to be continued. Dan Jurgens' artwork, amazing stuff, amazing work. Look, did you get Doomsday? Amazing. All right, guys, going to wrap this up pretty quickly because I don't want the camera to die. One day I'm going to figure out how to stop this from ending at 29, this camera. Boost to go 45, awesome. Red Robin 24, awesome. Once again... Citizen Cold, Deathstroke, and Emperor Aquaman number one. If you want to get the pins, fine. I'm not liking Flash 1 anymore because I know what the end result is. Batman, Arkham City 2 was good. Wolverine 10 was good. Uh, Fear Itself, Spider-Man Part 2 of 3. It's up to you guys. Death of Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man 159. Pretty interesting, but once again, going to drop it. New Avengers one, uh, no, 13 was alright. Skip it until Fear Itself. Spawn 208 was alright, Am Amber who hasn't come back yet, Vampirella 6 sucked, and Starborn 7 was awesome. Also check out the Green Lantern game and movie, straight to DVD anime movie that came out this week. And I will see you guys next week for another Dark Avengers comic book review. Um, take care guys, see you next week. Oh, there you are. Sorry. Bye. Later guys.